Hello all and welcome to Wow Crochet yet again for another tutorial and my name is Mary and I'm very excited today because we are going to be doing part two of our granny square crochet. <laughs> I've got to show this right. Our crochet along granny square. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> Wake up! Our granny square blanket crochet along. That's it. I got it. Don't ask me to say it again because I'm not going to do it, all right? <laughs> Stressed out already. <gasps> Okay, no, <laughs> today is part two. We are going to be blocking our granny squares. Um, and if you're just joining us new today, welcome. Uh, you haven't missed out. We have only just crocheted one square at this stage. We've done eight of that one color. So uh, if you want, you could uh, check out the description box down below for the link to this granny square, the very first part to the tutorial, uh, part one of the tutorial. And crochet the square and then come back to us, block this one square so you know what you're doing and then go ahead and do your other squares, okay? If you um, have done your crochet, your granny squares every day but you haven't woven in your ends, weave in your ends now, you cannot block unless you weave in those ends, okay? I know a lot of people leave the end and they block and then they kind of use it to sew in um, the back of another square when they're sewing in ends. Okay, we're going to be crocheting the squares together, not sewing. Um, but uh, I don't like the idea of it. But that's just me being fussy, so it's not wrong. <laughs> it's just me being fussy. So if you have not done your granny square and you would like to join us, go ahead, do the square and come back to us. For um, my regulars, yay, <laughs> we're here. Um, one of my regular, 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 er, regular row <laughs> if that's a word I'm going to use that as a word I don't care about the English language that's it I'm using that as a word regular <laughs> stop talking Mary okay um let's call her Deborah hi Deborah <laughs> she has asked me what size my granny square came out to be now I get that because yours truly did not discuss sizing um with your granny squares your size comes out the way your tension works, firstly. Secondly, if you are using um, a certain size hook, I use the four and a half because my crocheting is quite tight. However, using the four and a half hook can also make your square a little bit bigger than using the four hook, okay? So just be careful when you're using your hook sizes to stick to the same hook size when you are doing blankets because you don't want to change the sizing in one angle of the blanket one area of the blanket, I mean, to the other. Um, she had asked me about sizing. So what we'll do before we start blocking and everything, um, I'm gonna bring the camera down here and so that you can have a look at sizing. We can go through sizing, take no more than a couple of minutes, maybe five minutes max, or maybe less if we're quick enough, okay? You will need, for this tutorial, obviously, your squares. You can use all eight squares or you can just do one. It's probably best to do the eight so we can see exactly you can see exactly what I mean by sizing. Okay, you will need your, your pins. Now I'm using T-pins. I don't know if you've seen that. I'll, I'll give you a nice close-up later when we're doing it. Um, they're great. Don't get me wrong. I love them. The, the thing I found out with them, though, the lady told me they were rust-proof. I've only used them three times. Half of them are rusted. So I'm not happy. <laughs> I'm not happy at all because they cost more, so much more than your regular pins. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. You will need your measuring tape. <clears throat> now, my measuring tape is both inches and centimetres, so I'll be able to give both of them to you at some places around the world, use inches, and we in Australia tend to use centimetres more, but that doesn't matter because they're both there. You will need, you don't need this, it's not compulsory. I use it because I love using it, and I try not to use it if I'm giving, even though it's got a baby on the bottle, I try not to use it if I'm making for baby. And if I'm going to use it, I put very minimal in for baby, okay? And because this blanket is not for anybody in particular, I'm using it today. You don't need it. <clears throat> you could just block, uh, wet your item in water, which I'll explain later, and not use detergent. That's fine. It's just this is a softener, and it tends to soften my yarn up a little bit, so I'm quite happy with that. So you have your pins, you have your squares, you have your softener, you'll need a tub, just a small tub because we're only doing eight squares. Um, mine is a little bit bigger than the other ones, but that's fine. Um, we are going to bring the camera down, have a look at measurements, and then we'll get ready to start blocking. 
All righty, so here we have our squares, okay? Now, the reason I'm showing you um, the differences between squares here is when you put these two together, it's like one and a half or one and a quarter. But that, that's neither here nor there. When you're measuring your blanket, you are measuring each square, then you multiply it by eight because we've done eight in each colour from memory, yeah? Multiply it by eight, but you have to remember that we're putting, sorry, I'll do it this way so you can see, we are putting a row of cream in between each square. So there's a row of cream there and a row of cream here. So really, we have five rows. I don't know if it makes any sense. We have five rows on, on the square. Even though it says four, we actually have a fifth row. So what we'll do, we'll do a rough, a rough measurement of a, of a fifth row. This will just give you a rough measurement of how big your blanket will be. So you get all your squares. I won't lay them all out because you won't be able to see them in the frame. Let's pretend like you've laid them all out. There. You measure right across the eight squares, giving yourself that extra bit in the middle for the um, cream. Again, it's a rough measurement. So it's not going to be perfect when you're measuring at this stage because you're only measuring how long your blanket will be roughly all right so you just go right across you measure and then you add another four rows only around the whole blanket so you get this and measure another four around the whole blanket and i roughly came up with about um i think it was 80 or 91 centimeters in length and 70 something centimeters in width roughly again Everybody's different and everybody crochets um, looser or tighter or whatever, okay? Now, if you wanted to do the bigger size, remember if you're doing the bigger size, you're going to need more yarn than what we suggested in the promo when I first did it um, a few weeks back. So you have to be careful in deciding to change your mind the last minute and want to add two more rows to make your blanket bigger. It's the same way of measuring you measure across right and you put your all your squares roughly a few centimeters apart maybe about a centimeter and a half or two centimeters apart and then you measure right across and you add one two three four five six on this one because you're you're doing six rows and as a rule you want to do a six row border you again you don't have to you could do a four row border whatever you want, as long as you work out the calculations the right way. I hope that made sense for you, Deborah, in calculating your squares and how big your blanket will be towards the end. If it didn't, leave the comment in the section down below, in the comment section, and I'll re-explain it properly in the very next tutorial, or I'll actually measure it all up for you and give you measurements for each size square in the next tutorial towards how it's going to go towards the end of the blanket okay and that's all I want to say about that because I want to get on with the um, blocking um, I did forget to mention before that when we were saying all the items that we needed we needed like your pins and your measuring tape but we also and I forgot to mention need a towel and yours truly always uses a white towel when blocking and the reason is because um, I like to make sure that, let's say this has a, a discoloration colour. If I see that while blocking, I'll know that if I use a cream on that border, it's going to discolour my cream. It's going to go all over the cream and that's not what you want. So always check for colouration when you're making your items. You may find that it may dampen the uh, mood if you find out it, it does leave uh, colour marks. I have never come across a yarn that has left colour marks. However, I have had friends say, Eek, that yarn left blue stains all over my hand while I was crocheting, or green stains, or whatever it is, red stains. So it has happened to some of my friends, but to me, not so much. Okay, so grab your towel, grab your tub, and we are so going to get ready for blocking right now. All right, so here we are with our tub. We have our cuddly, sensitive fabric softener. Um, and I've put about, oh, I don't know, a, a quarter of a cap in there 
I'm not too worried about using it. The only reason I'm using it is because it has a nice smell. <laughs> That's all. You don't really need to use um, the softener. You don't need to use anything of that matter. As long as you wet your square just that little bit, that's fine. So what we're going to do is fill up some water. You could put warm water, you could put cool water, depending on what your um, yarn is calling for. Don't mind the noisy tap, we've got a problem with it. It's got to be repaired. Pop your detergent in, a bit of cool water. That's all I'm doing, I'm not fussing with warm water. Oh, let's turn that down, there it goes. I'm not fussing with warm water. Oh, the tap is tilted a little bit, but that's okay. We don't need too much. Just give it a shake. If you don't have detergent, that's fine. Just fill up your tub to the size of water that you want. I'm just going to fill it up to as um, full as I can carry it. <laughs> or as heavy as I can carry it, I should say. And remember, we're only putting in eight squares, so I'm not too worried about it. Okay, there you go. So now we're going to take the tub into the other room, because I can't really block in here. <laughs> it's a bathroom bench. And um, then we'll get blocking, okay? Catch you soon. All right, so as you can see, uh, this is my blocking board, and I know it's to be desired. I've used it so many times. If you don't have a blocking board, you could have used the white towel. That's not a problem. If you have a blocking board like this, um, terrific. All this is is um, you know workout mats, you know, like Taekwondo and and karate workout mats. That's all they are, okay. And you can get them in Kmart and Big W and whatever stores you have in your own country. The small stores, you know, I've been more small stores. The larger stores that they sell these through, like you know, constantly. So they're um very easy to get. They're not as expensive. I can't remember how much I spent on mine, but they're not that expensive. So I did buy them. Um, and actually I panicked at first because I noticed that this was grey and I thought, what if this discolours my square? And I was really paranoid. And then one day I took a risk and used white on here, said a few prayers and it worked. <laughs> so there was no stains on the white. All right. So we're going to get started. The reason I've got these two threads here is to tell me to keep in, in frame because I can't see the camera at this stage. So I'm hoping that this works. Now, um, water. Water, water, water. Where is the water? We filled that before with our, um, our, what do you call it? Softener. Again, you don't need to use your softener. Can you see the water in that frame? Let's have a look. Oh, only just. So what you want to do is grab every one of your squares. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Pop them in. Don't be shy to mix it all around. I don't know if you can see that from up there, but I'll just... Give it a mix, very gentle mix. You don't have to massage too much. I'm just doing it so you can see the water and soap going in there. Now, again, if you don't want to use the fabric softener, by all means, don't use it. Uh, especially when you're working with baby gear, uh, newborn gear, you don't want to cause any allergies or reactions in baby. So you might, with baby gear, just wash it in normal water. Now, yours truly, when I do the very last blocking, um, once the border is on, I just use plain water. I don't use the detergent. Otherwise, it just smells <laughs> like the detergent. There's so much detergent in it. And some people do rinse their um, squares. Okay, they do rinse it. Um, but, you know, you don't need to. At this stage, you can rinse it when your blanket is almost fully made. If you don't want to do that and you just want to spray the square... So what you'll do is you will put the square on the blocking board with pins and spray it with water, a spray bottle. You don't even need to soak it like this, okay? I've actually soaked my items usually um, for about an hour just to get the stiffness out of them so they're very soft. But in this stage, because we're um, learning how to block, I'm not going to bother sewing, uh, sewing, soaking. I'm just going to lay out the blanket. I'm going to move these threads bit further down okay there that's just to tell me exactly where not to come out of frame <laughs> all right there you go so you lay your your blanket your blanket I was going to say you lay your towel out okay give 
one of your squares a gentle squeeze in the water you can't see it there but it doesn't matter i'm sure you know how to squeeze a square <laughs> just a gentle squeeze like this just do that you don't need to hand wring it or something because you don't want to pull it out of place pop it on your towel get another square okay there is this this is very basic it doesn't matter how you put them on upside down wrong way around it doesn't matter because um it's only going to be the towel is only there to dry your square a little bit before you put it on the blocking board so that it's not saturated you don't want it to be saturated and i noticed that some of my squares are a little bit loose and some are a little bit tight so blocking the squares will actually keep them all in um, sync with each other so that's really going to help okay all right so that's your eight squares i'm going to remove this tub now so i can work and all you need to do is grab the other end of the towel, pop it there, grab that end, pop it there, and just give it a gentle squeeze. I don't know if I'm in frame there, no, I'm not here. Just give it a gentle squeeze, not much, just as long as most of that water is out, and there you go. I leave it in the towel, and then I just work with one at a time. I can find one. <laughs> okay, so there we go. There's our first square. Give it a gentle tug. Now, this is the fun bit. You grab your measuring tape and you measure the size that you want. Okay. Now, if you're smart enough, you will measure that square, you'll pin it all down, then you'll get your next square and measure it right up to that one so you don't have to keep using the tape for this way. You might need to use a tape for that way, but not for this way. So we're going to measure that. We'll do it in uh, both inches or centimetres. It doesn't matter. I would like my square to be nine centimeters anyway. So I'm gonna leave it at nine centimeters. I'm not gonna use a measuring tape, but if you wanted, you could use the measuring tape. I'm gonna see if you can see that square while I'm pinning. Give me one second, guys. I'm just gonna see if we can see it. Oh, yeah, sort of. Okay, so all you need to do, grab your pin, pop it in one corner, anywhere you want. Grab another pin, measure it the size that you want. Don't pull too tight or you're going to have that pull right there and you don't want that. So measure it the size that you want, whatever size you want. I want it at the nine, so you get your other pin and you pop it there. What you do to one side, you've got to do to the other, but you also have to do to the bottom bit as well. And I want my nine, which I've just done, right there. Looks a bit off shape now, doesn't it? Because... I've measured that and I've measured that, but I haven't measured this. So we want to measure and make sure it all, it's all straight. Okay. Once you get it all straight, okay, you get your pins, more pins, and it's up to you. This part, I do it. I like to do this bit because it keeps it completely straight. You pin it all down. And I'm hoping that the pins I'm putting in are not rusted. <laughs> Okay, and that's what you do there. Then you grab another square. Because you've already measured this bit, give you a square. Oh, well, these are very nice and soft, actually. Mm. This yarn's come up really nice and soft. You, All you need to do is keep that. I hope I'm in frame. Let me bring that out a bit. Move it over. There we go. Keep that exactly the same size as there. So really, all you're measuring later is this way. So pop that there. And I've noticed this square is a little bit loose. That one's a bit tight. This one's a bit loose. So there you go. This one I don't need to pull much because it's a bit loose than the other one. It's more loose than the other one, okay? Now, you want to measure across there. So across that one there is pretty much nine. So that's what we're going to use here. Pretty much nine. And there you go. This should be the same as that there. And hope that that... Oops, no, a little bit more to this side. That's better. All right, there you go. And then you get your other pins and you put them down in the middle. Oops, I got two there. Sorry about that. Okay, so all you need to do now, do your rest of your squares and, um, and I'll meet you up at the end of the tutorial. All right, here we have our eight squares. 
I'm not going to move the camera up and down because it's just going to make the whole thing awkward. Just to let you know, um, the eight squares are all pinned down, as you can see. Now, all we need to do is pop them on the floor somewhere near a doorway or on a table near a doorway and just let the breeze look after drying them and just, just leave them there for a couple of days if you want. You don't even have to be in a hurry to get them dry, leave them for a couple of days. And then we will start doing our um, crochet the granny squares together. And that's going to be fun. I've uh, just found a new stitch, which I'm loving, loving, loving. And that is one we're going to use. It might be a little bit tricky for newcomers, newbies, um, but you, you'll get it. You'll do it. Just do it. You know, I know I say this all the time, just do it. But I mean, just do it. You, you'll do it. It's, it's not that difficult. A little bit tricky, but you'll get it. Okay. And crocheting them together is so satisfying, a lot more satisfying than sewing them together. Okay. I have used the old Victorian style stitch to sew my um, squares together in the past. And let me tell you, it is long, it is tedious. <laughs> and one day we'll do it. But in the meantime, we're going to be uh, crocheting these squares together. Now, um, put them aside for a week and um, come back to them. Now, well, let's just do our final of the video. Yay! <laughs> we've washed and blocked, we've pinned, everything's ready and waiting to dry. Now, in a couple of days' time, go back to it. If you're in a hurry, pop it near a window or near a door, get some air in. If you're not in a hurry like me, I'm not worried, um, I'm going to leave them there for a couple of days, okay? Then I'll do the tutorial for you for the eighth day, okay? So in eight days' time, I want you to come back to us. We're going to crochet those melon squares together and then... I want you to wash and block these. After we've crocheted the melon squares, wash and block these. While they are drying, make your next colour for another eight days afterwards. But just come back to us in eight days' time and we will start crocheting those melon squares together. I'm very excited. That's the part I like because that's the part that says to me, we're getting close to the end. Well, we're really not. We've only done one square, really, if you think about it. Eight squares, <laughs> one colour. So there you go. Don't forget, if you would like to leave a comment about this tutorial or anything else here on um, Wow Crochet, do leave them in the, the um, comment section down below. If you're a little bit shy and you don't like to leave comments um, here on social media, but you want to talk to me about something uh, that you don't want to advertise on social media, then you can actually post me a letter via what we call snail mail here in Australia. I do have my post office box details in the description box down below. Um, you will also find in the description box down below another tutorial on blocking. I did another tutorial in the past on blocking uh, beanies. So it's a total different thing altogether. That was more, uh, not so much on blocking, it was more on um, using the cuddly, the cuddly softer, softer, the cuddly softener that we used in this tutorial, or Hair conditioner, that is true, people. A lot of people use hair conditioner to wash and block their squares, assuming that it makes their items softer. It does. But I'm not going to give away any information. If you want to see that, you need to click on that link down below for that tutorial. Uh, if you're new and you want to continue doing this granny square blanket with us, don't forget to subscribe and to hit the bell button so you can receive the tutorials in your inbox. If you are a regular, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you like the tutorial. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you did. Click like. Um, what else can I say except that there will be other tutorials in between our Granny Square blanket. So don't be shy if you want to do something else coming up as well. That's fine too. I want to talk about in um, another tutorial about a, a yarn bowl that a friend of mine has organized for us both to have yarn bowls um, that would be my friend Adriana who also colleague crochet colleague who has also given me an interview done an interview with me here on YouTube by the way that link will be in the description box down below also in the description box down below you will find um, other tutorials that you might like to crochet while you're waiting for those squares you might find you've done all the squares in the one day and you would like to do something else while you're waiting. I have a whole lot of tutorials in, a um, whole lot of links in the description box down below of some of my famous tutorials that people like to do. What else can I tell you? 
nothing. I'm just so excited that we got through the blocking. I'm very excited that we are going to be crocheting along our squares next week. Very, very excited. Oh, big pat on the back, by the way, guys, for doing your blocking today. And don't forget, what else can I say? Click like if you liked the tutorial. You didn't like it, just don't do anything. <laughs> okay. And um, all I can say for now is ciao for now. <laughs>